Hans Meyer is the man trying to save Gladbach from the drop. At 66, he's the oldest and most experienced coach in the Bundesliga. Meyer looks back on an illustrious career. As a player, he won two championships with the East German club Jena. And he went on to become one of East Germany's most successful coaches. He coached in Holland, then moved to München Gladbach in 1999. After stints at Berlin and Nuremberg, he's been back at Gladbach since October. You're often described as a communicative but also a stubborn interviewee. What does that mean for me? I can certainly identify with the term communicative. What was the other one? Stubborn. Stubborn. I just want to know what to expect. You can expect what every journalist can expect from Hans Meyer. When you talk about something Hans Meyer understands, then I'm anything but stubborn. Great, let's do that. Let's talk about Gladbach. The euphoria surrounding Munching Gladbach's return to the top flight is long gone. Their descent began early in the season. In October, coach Jos Luhukai was given his marching orders and Hans Meyer returned. During the winter break, Meyer reorganized his squad. His top priority was defense. Gladbach had the worst in the league. His changes seemed to be taking effect. Last week's defeat of Hanover showed signs of a reinvigorated side. I think I think we have a lot of motivated players. We have some very good second division players and a couple of really good first division players. But we haven't been able to prove ourselves as a team and show whether we've got what it takes to stay in this division. If you don't weigh up the situation properly at the beginning and then you find yourself in this cycle of losing, it's what everyone says, but it's true. You do gradually lose your self-confidence. And when you're where we are, it becomes very complicated. The situation we are in is very, very precarious. As the defeats mount, self-confidence becomes scarce. In the rough and tumble of the relegation battle, promising youngsters are often sidelined. We totally neglected our young players due to our terrible situation. I've tried to change that. I brought in two very young players from our reserve team. I've given Tobias Levels a chance. Johannes van der Berg is playing again. And Alexander Baumjohan, who hardly played before, is now back and playing regularly. Then there's Marco Marin, who's just 19, but has played 19 Bundesliga games so far. Marco Marin has scored some crucial goals during his 19 appearances. Hans Meyer has often used him as a substitute, giving the tabloid papers the opportunity to talk up a rift between the coach and the young Germany international. He wasn't angry, nothing could be further from the truth. He knows better than to place his trust in a tabloid reporter. He knows his coach has a greater interest in his development. I'll set my own ultimatum, not some other smartass. As soon as one wish is fulfilled, it immediately spawns others. And what if we lose? Hans Meyer won't cry. But it is critical. These wonderful pencil pushers should continue writing their garbage. We'll recruit some scientists, we'll do some tests, and then I'll tell you if it's in the head or in the legs. Hans Meyer and the tabloid press have always had a rocky relationship. He can be deliberately provocative and makes no secret of the fact he doesn't like the way they work. Let me tell you this. For almost two years, one of the star reporters from Sport Build magazine has been trying desperately to get an interview. I tell them I don't want to. You can't imagine how many times I turn down requests to go on camera. When you've been in the business as long as I have, and there's some idiot telling you you're the star of the team and not the players, well, I just won't be part of that nonsense. You want it in French? German, please. I'll always get on badly with people of your profession who have no idea about football or who are malicious. 
and who only see their job in terms of a product to be sold. 2003 was a particularly controversial year for Hans Meyer. He stepped down as Gladbach coach, intending to retire. But within a year, he was back in the Bundesliga. He saved Berlin from relegation and moved to Nuremberg, where he won the German Cup. When Dieter Hoeneß, Berlin's commercial manager, tried talking me into staying in Berlin for another four months, he knew from the outset that there was no chance of me staying any longer. I made an exception for those first four months. They were time out of the game that I needed because I thought I could save my marriage. That meant a lot to me, and that's why I would have welcomed an early retirement. But I realized it was too late, and it was a futile situation. So when I no longer had that argument, I actually gladly took on the job with Nuremberg. I felt good, and I felt young, and I've always enjoyed doing this job. And when that main reason to retire disappeared, I decided to return. Hans Meyer's love of the game has remained strong throughout his almost 40-year career. He says as time has gone by, he's become more laid back. I look at you and I see you're still a young man. Is your father a millionaire or a billionaire? No, unfortunately not. Well, I was just thinking he could have been a financial manager, leaving the business as a rich man in these bad times. But I hope that in your life you reach a situation where you have enough money, even if you have a relatively modest lifestyle, where you're no longer accountable to anyone. Then you can say, I don't need to march to anyone else's tune. I don't need to prove myself to anyone or make my boss look good, even if he is a bit of an idiot. And I really hope you're in that situation once, because then you'll automatically become more laid back. That's not an artificial state of relaxation. It's genuine. Then I wouldn't have to buy sparkling wine. Do you do that? Yes. You see, and that's precisely what thrilled me when I made that remark almost ten years ago. I got a whole truckload of sparkling wine because of what I said. We'd just beaten Bayern 1-0, and I was asked what I might be doing that night. I said, I'm going to open a bottle of cheap sparkling wine for a couple of euros. Or was it still Deutschmarks? And get totally drunk. And a week later, the truck arrived. The truck arrived. That's what I call service. I bathed in sparkling wine for weeks. That's why I still look so young. Yeah. <laughs>